This one time I lost almost $9 million in one day. 2019, Saudi oil family, super, super wealthy, reach out to me because the kid, one of the many kids in the family, followed me on social. This family had a budget of up to $1 billion for one building. They wanted to buy a trophy asset building in America, and they wanted to start in New York City. I have done some commercial transactions, right? We actually do quite a bit, but I had never sold a massive building in a single transaction before. We do billions and billions and billions of dollars of sales, right, every single year, but that's across a lot of different transactions. 2019, the market was like, okay, it's gonna be great. We're about to start a new decade. It's gonna be amazing. They wanna fly over in their own freaking jumbo jet, private everything, crazy airplane, and we start seeing things. They have representatives who are here, and then sometimes the family's flying over, and we kind of go back and forth for six months. I'm taking them to like the fanciest dinners and lunches, and we're looking at all these different types of buildings throughout New York City, showing them hotel options, multifamily options, office options with retail. I was also learning a lot at the time, and I'd bring in different partners in different areas who could talk intelligently about the type of product, but we found a building. East side of Manhattan, about 800 apartments, not rent stabilized, actually had an abatement and it was sick. You could see it from everywhere. It was amazing. And the owner was actually willing to sell it. There's lots of buildings all over the world where like, sure, they'll sell. What's it worth, a billion? I'll take three billion. Those don't work. This one, they're actually willing to sell. Do a solid cap rate deal. My buyers were cash buyers. They wanted to close as soon as possible, like one of those blue whale, like pipe dream types of deals. And we started negotiating, right? End of 2019, we go into early 2020. We got a contract out for what I think was $942 million. Um, and the commission to me was just about $9 million. That would have been the largest single commission check I'd ever gotten. And it would have been the largest single deal I'd ever done. And we were good. Sell side, very real, moving forward on the transaction. Buy side, they had the best attorneys here in New York City. This was gonna be a huge moment for them. And I was just almost kind of like excited to be involved, right? They like, thank you for letting me be at the table. I was like a brand new young actor, you know, at the Oscars, who's winning, who's just like, I don't even know how I'm here. Holy shit, you're there, Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, what's up? Why am I even in this moment? That's kind of what it felt like in that moment. Um, and they were ready to sign. Everything was good to go. They were setting up bank accounts, everything. Second week of March, 2020. People in China were getting sick. They'd been getting sick, but you know, that doesn't affect us here. Um, then Italy shut down. It's weird. Then France, um, Asia shut down. Trump shut down all international travel. The NBA shut down. Every show, concert, everything started to shut down. And then Cuomo shut down. New York City. And I got an email from the buyer's representatives that said, um, we're just going to wait and see how things go. And other deals were still happening because people were getting sick and things were crazy, but like deals were still kind of happening at that time, except for the fact that throughout Europe, Africa, Asia, people started driving a lot less. People started not going to the gas station as much. And if you remember at that time, March into April of 2020, the price of oil starts to fall. And that really, really affects a Saudi oil rich family. So the buyer said, we wanna wait. This COVID thing, this might blow over in a couple weeks, so on and so forth. And as we all know now, the COVID thing did not blow over in a couple weeks. And a couple weeks after that, they reached out to me that said, given the current environment and everything that's going on, uh, safety is first, foremost, and paramount. Um, we need to put this deal on hold. And it died that day. My $9 million commission just evaporated into oil dust, into the ether, and it never got resurrected. That building eventually sold to somebody else at a lower price. Um, and it still pains me to this day. I never really talk about dead deals, but I think it's important to, you know, mix up the type of stories I tell with the stories that also really sucked and pains. I've lost more deals than I've won. 
by far. Just like a baseball player. I've swung and missed and struck out way more times than I've hit home runs. But I try all the time. And so here's what I learned. First, you can't cry over spilled milk, right? meaning that you cannot worry about what you can't control. There was nothing I could have done to save that deal. If there was something that I did wrong, this is a different story. You need to focus on what you can control. You need to focus on your purpose-driven goals and get to those goals and not worry about the individual deals. That's a really freeing thought for me because for a long time, even until just a couple years ago, I was so focused on the individual transactions that would make up that big yearly goal. And if one died, it was so personal. The $9 million never even existed. It wasn't money that I actually lost. Was it close to being mine? Yes. But did it ever actually even exist? No. Because you can't count your dollars that way. Until the deal is done, signed, sealed, delivered, and closed, then, that money is yours. And the last thing I learned, and this is for any real estate agent who's watching this, anyone in sales, or anyone who just wanted to hear about how awful this day was in my life. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Deals come and deals go. You are made up of your wins as much as you are made up of your failures. That deal taught me a lot about doing commercial deals. I learned a lot for six months. I almost got it done, but it didn't, and it's okay. And the greatest day of your entire life, you haven't even lived yet. The greatest client you'll ever have, you haven't even met that person yet. That's what also set me free and what I learned from that loss. Because fast forward, six months later, I started my own company. After losing that deal, I was like, screw it, you know what? Let's start our own company. It's one of the greatest decisions I ever made in my life. Fast forward six months after that, and I sold the biggest single family residential home I'd ever sold in my life for just under $140 million in Palm Beach. That had been on my vision board for 10 years, way before selling a billion dollar commercial building was. That deal was super random, would be amazing if it had happened, and it didn't happen, so it's okay. It was, it was never meant to be, and it's fine. There's nothing I can do about it. I'll make it up sometime in the distance. I will do a billion dollar trade one day in the future. Future Ryan is gonna do that. I know it, I was close to it, it'll happen again. But your greatest deal you've ever done, you haven't even done yet. It's gonna be there. Maybe it's tomorrow, maybe it's a month from now, maybe it's a year from now, maybe it's 10 years from now. You just have to keep moving forward. Just keep paddling.